And there's movement on the Republican side in the most recent NBC News Wall Street Journal poll. That's a national poll. Florida Senator Marco Rubio is now tied for third place. And what a coincidence. Marco Rubio, good morning. Nice good morning. to see you, Thanks Senator. How are you? Good. So you're, you're one of the first people we've been able to see here in the last month or so where I can say you had a good September. Um, we felt good about it. I mean, we felt good about the entire campaign. It's a long road, and it's, uh, but it's a lot of fun to do this, to go out around the country and get to meet people and talk about the issues. Good news, bad news. Good news, the polls are up. Bad news, that makes you a target for some of your opponents. Let me tell you what some people are saying about you. Deb, Jeb Bush is telling people that when he was governor of Florida, he led and you followed. Donald Trump has apparently sent you some kind of a <laughs> gag gift meant to poke fun at the fact you have a tendency to perspire. From the other side, Debbie Wasserman Schultz tweeted, someone had to say it, Marco Rubio is no foreign policy whiz kid. Flattered? Uh, yeah. I mean, look, this is what happens when people are running for office. They're looking for something that's going to give them a competitive advantage. And if they think talking bad about someone uh, is going to give them that, then that's what they're going to do. And as far as uh, I'm great, I mean, we, the, apparently the water is very high quality water. It's top notch water that he sent us, uh, that Donald Trump sent us. Let so me we're ask grateful you for the gift. Serious question about your attendance. That's been one of the topics yeah. people have hit you on lately. 29% of the time over the last year, you were not in attendance when votes were taken in the sen yeah. sen Senate. And I know you say you're running for president, but your record before that wasn't great. Great either. Are you placing your own personal ambitions above your responsibilities to your constituents down in no, Florida? No, in fact, the majority of the job of being a senator is not walking onto the Senate floor and lifting your finger on a non controversial issue and saying which way you're going to vote. The majority of the work of a senator is the constituent service, the committee work, and that continues forward unabated. When you run for president, Everyone that's run for president in the past has faced this. There are times when you're not going to be there. Now, let me tell you, we have canceled events and traveled across the country to make votes, either especially if we can make a difference or if it's a high profile. So you issue don't think importance. you're putting your ambitions above the people? No, of my Florida. ambitions aren't for me. Then my ambitions are for the country and Florida, and that's why I'm running for president. And and I I honestly believe that if I can become elected president, we can begin to fix some of these issues that I've been so frustrated we've been unable to address during my time in the Senate. An issue coming up this week: Should Kevin McCarthy be the speaker? Of the House. Well, I don't opine on the leadership races of the other body in the, in the process. I, I, don't, I know Kevin, but I don't know him well. I'm going to let House members decide who the next speaker is. You don't is. get a vote, but he made some very controversial comments recently, which seemed to tie the work of the House Benghazi Committee yeah. to a political move to damage Hillary Clinton in the polls. Does that disqualify him from being Speaker of the House? Well, I don't think it disqualifies him, but let me just say I think it's a bad idea to opine on the leadership races of the other body. They're going to get to choose the Speaker of the House. They know him better. They're, they're, there's a campaign going on over there for that office. We'll let them choose the Speaker, and we'll work with whoever it is. If I say to you that a young man, 26 years old, living in Oregon, mm -hmm. with a history of mental illness, according to his own mother, owned 14 guns, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? That his family shouldn't have allowed him to do it, that he should have been reported to authorities, that there should have been more mental health services available for someone like that. What I don't, what I know is this, many of the proposals that are out there now on gun control would not have prevented that attack or some of the others we've seen in the past. Uh, unfortunately, in cases of mental illness or in, in the cases of someone who just wants a gun to carry out a crime, they're not going to follow the law. So how don't... would you lead on this issue? If you are the president of the United States, how would you lead so that issues in cases like the Oregon Community College shooting do not continue to repeat well, themselves? Well, a couple points to make on this. Number one is the reason we need to start examining why it is that people are taking violent action, not what they're using to commit the violent act with. And we have two issues in this country. One is mental illness, which we need to begin to address more seriously, as opposed to stigmatizing it or in some cases trying to put it aside. And that's, that's a societal thing that we need to confront as a society in a country. And the other, of course, is why have we become so violent as individuals? What, it, what is it that's leading people in this country who are not mentally ill to do the sort of drive-by shootings and things so that we've we have seen? two issues. We've got why are people so violent, mental illness. You do not see guns as an issue at all? The guns are what they're using to commit the violence. And again, in many of these cases, the laws that are actually being proposed would not have prevented them. For example, these were not assault rifles. These were handguns that he had purchased. The same was true in a previous attack just a few weeks ago. The, the laws that many are proposing would have done nothing to prevent these attacks. Let me ask you one little thing before you leave. In a, in a recent interview, a former Clinton campaign manager said that the ticket that worries the Democrats the most is Rubio Kasich or Kasich Rubio. 
I like Rubio Kasich better, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, or, or Rubio someone else. But look, we have a very talented bench of people running on the Republican side. We're fortunate to have that. You know, the Democrats are still struggling to come up with one. Would you agree to be part of that ticket in either direction? Well, I want to be at the top of the ticket. That's what we're running for president. I, I feel good about our campaign. Senator Marco Rubio, it's good to have you in studio Thank with you. us. Thank you. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.